On this week's episode of Adapting the Outdoors, we're going to take some of this delicious venison from the deer that I shot a few weeks ago. We're going to cook it in the skillet, and we're going to turn it into raviolis. Stay tuned, guys. This is going to be a good show for you. It's going to be a healthy meal. It's going to be a fast meal. It's going to be something everybody can enjoy. Stay tuned. recipe by getting a pan screaming hot. I mean, normally I would wait until smoke starts coming up. Next thing you want to do after you get your pan preheated is dump your venison into your pan. And you want to brown that until it's virtually cooked through. You can have a little bit of pink in it, and most people prefer a little bit of pink left in their venison. Otherwise, it'll dry out really bad. Break it up as much as you can. Like I said, we want to brown that until most of the red is gone out of the meat. Probably about 10 minutes. Okay, so I want to point out that we are at about the halfway point now. And that's what everything looks like. Now would be a good time if you wanted to, and I'm going to, uh, add your seasonings. You could have done this at the very beginning, but I had just forgotten to, so you want to take basil leaves, and you can use basically whatever kind of seasonings you want. You know, you could turn this into a taco type seasoning ravioli. It's literally whatever you want to use. I'm using basil leaves. And garlic powder. A 
I like to keep my seasonings really simple. Another thing I forgot to mention was that this is about two pounds of ground deer meat. And if you're not a fan of deer meat, you can use uh, ground beef, ground turkey, literally any, any kind of meat that you want to use, you can put in this. So like I said, we'll let this cook down for about 10, maybe 15 minutes until it's mostly browned through. And then I will come back and show you guys the next step. Okay, so okay, so now we have the meat mostly browned and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is to add the other half of our filling. And for that, we're going to use cream cheese. And literally all you want to do is take your cream cheese and you want to put it in the pan. And now that it's in the pan, after I wash my hands, you want to fold it into the meat and incorporate it. Okay, so now you just want to take and break this up And stir it into the ground meat. This will get everything coated and will cause the cheese to start melting a little bit and get everything all nice and creamy. So I will come back when that's done and I will show you guys what it looks like. Okay, so that is pretty much what you want it to look like. Everything is incorporated the meat is thoroughly cooked through. There's probably still a little bit of pink in it, but otherwise the meat is pretty much cooked through. And the cream cheese and the meat are very well mixed together. So the next step is to make the raviolis. Now you can let this um, cool down a little bit and I would recommend doing so, so that way it doesn't cause your pasta to fall apart and prematurely cook. Alright, so the next step in making the raviolis is to make our filling, or to put in our filling. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that our ravioli pasta, whether you use egg rolls like I'm making, or you use wonton wrappers, it really doesn't matter for this recipe, uh, you can use either one. You want to take a teaspoon of your filling and put it in the center of your pasta. And actually you want to put it in the lower half because what you're going to do is you're going to take a little bit of egg. Now normally you would use a brush, but I'm just using my finger because my hands are clean and because I can. want 
to fold this down. And you want to run it on all four sides to get a good seal. And you want to kind of smush it down a little bit to get all your air pockets out. And then, what you're going to do, you're going to take a fork. the edges. Move this one out of the way. Now see if you were using regular wonton wrappers, you'd get the nice tine marks. But with these egg roll wrappers, you don't really get that. But it still looks nice. Put that over there. And you want to keep both your freshly made pasta and the pasta that you haven't used yet, you want to keep them under a damp paper towel. That way they don't dry out. Okay, so we've made the first one. We put it under a wet paper towel so that way it didn't dry out. I'll go ahead and show you another one. Again, we've already got the meat on the pasta, so now all we got to do is take the egg wash and run down all four sides. And you can see that one's kind of got a bit of a, a crack in it. That could be because it dried out a little too much or it was over overfilled. You definitely want to be careful and not overfill your pasta too much. Again, cover it up. And I will come back after I've made a few of these and I'll show you the next step. Stay tuned guys. Alright, so now that we have the raviolis actually made, the next step is to boil them. Now again I've got probably 10 maybe maybe eight raviolis on this plate and I've covered them with a damp paper towel to keep them from drying out so you, what you want to do is you want to 
get a saucepan or a pot that you would cook your pasta in and you want to fill it up about halfway to three quarters of the way and get it to a rolling boil then after it comes to a rolling boil you will put the pasta in cook them for about three minutes and then you will serve them I will show you the step as we get closer so for now I'm going to let it come up to heat and we'll come back when it is up to roll and boil alright guys as you can see that's a pretty rolling boil uh, so the next step is going to be to add our pasta in I'm going to put the camera back down and I will show you guys that step now you want to be careful because this is hot water extremely hot water so you want to be as careful as possible when dropping these in Now like I said, once these have all been put in the pot, cook them three to five minutes, they will start to float, and that's how you know that they're done. So we will come back when these are ready to come out. These are officially done. They have come to a boil. And as you can see, they've started to float. Now if you wanted to, you could put any kind of a sauce on it you wanted. You could do an Alfredo sauce, you could do a marinara sauce. Literally, the skies are the limits. That's what they look like. So like I said, you could use an Alfredo sauce, you could use a marinara sauce, you could use whatever you wanted. I simply like to dress it up with a little bit of butter. And Parmesan. And there you have it, guys. Venison raviolis. Alright. Let's take a bite. perfect well guys I hope you enjoyed this episode um, again this recipe can have a million variations you don't just have to use venison you don't just have to use cream cheese and when it comes to your sauce you don't just have to use butter and Parmesan like I did you can literally do anything you want and this is a fantastic recipe for a date night. If you're trying to impress that new girlfriend or it's your anniversary, literally any occasion that you want to use this recipe for, it is a perfect recipe. If you would, before you guys leave, uh, check out the sponsors in the description box below. Without these guys, this show would not be possible. I want to thank my buddy Darren Lear, 
my buddy Brent DeWolf, and all of my sponsors. They have helped me have a fantastic season with deer hunting, and I cannot wait to get back out probably January or sometime in February to do a little bit of pheasant hunting. Um, I'll have more videos between now and then, but I am going to eventually have to take a break here in a couple of weeks because I have to have surgery on my dialysis port in my arm, uh, which I'm hoping to have an entire episode dedicated to all of that. So, um, depending on how I'm feeling, I will have that video up here in a couple of weeks. So, I appreciate you guys watching, and I look forward to seeing you next week, right here on Adapting the Outdoors.